Hello, my name is Hakim with Tech of Experts. At the end of my last video, which was titled Commercial or, or Residential Painting, which is better? I promised I would discuss in my next video about how I transitioned from doing only residential painting to bidding and doing commercial painting projects. So here it is. When I started my one-man show residential painting business about 17 years ago, it was the usual as most of you have probably experienced. I would advertise in the yellow pages and newspaper classifieds, get the old phone call, go, go to the homeowner's location, do a quote, and then get the job. I would do it by myself or with a helper. I would get some work from other contacts also to keep me busy. This went on for about two to three years. At that time, once someone had asked me about whether I was interested in commercial painting. And I had replied, oh no, that is too complicated. I can't do that, that's not for me. Besides, I don't have a large crew. Now, you have probably thought that too at one time. Now, I was only half correct in saying that. Yes, I did not have a large crew, but not all commercial painting projects are large or complicated. There are several levels. There is the simple office repaint project, which anyone can do. Then there is the small TI projects, which involve office renovations, such as an accounting office, a dental office, a mortgage broker office, etc., which involves straightforward painting of doors, walls, ceilings, and so on. Then there is the medium-sized projects, such as townhouses and multiple duplexes, etc., then the large ones, the larger ones like schools, and then the extremely large and complicated ones like hospitals, high rises with various specifications, large universities. Uh, you know, the, the, those involve lots of administrative and um, legal paperwork, etc., such as bonding and high threshold of liability insurance and so on. Then, of course, there is the light industrial and heavy industrial projects. I'll show you some examples here on the screen. So anyway, in a couple of years into the business, I started getting some small commercial painting inquiries. So, for example, I had done a repaint job in a lady's house who had been referred to me by her next door neighbor, whose house I'd also painted at one time. So her husband, who was a professional accountant at some firm, was quitting his job and starting his own accounting firm. So he asked me to give him a quote for his new offices in a certain plaza in a busy area. It was a TI project with minor renovations, including painting. So I gave him a quote and I got the contract. The money was good and the job was, in a way, simpler than a residential painting job. It did not involve things like spraying alkyd paint on uh, popcorn ceilings, painting stairwells with high ladders, um, moving and covering furniture, covering carpets, and so on. This one was much simpler because the office was empty and the flooring was being replaced. As opposed to a furnished house, the job went faster and therefore was much more profitable per square foot of drywall. You see, when we measure drawings for painting contractors, we measure actual drywall, not the, not the square footage, unless we are doing takeoffs for a tiling contractor, of course. So we measure and count everything else also to be painted or epoxied, as required in the finishing schedule that the architect has prepared in the drawings, you know, columns, doors, exposed ceilings, baseboards, uh, sealer on concrete, uh, epoxy on concrete, etc. So this accounting office TI painting project was under $5,000, but more profitable per square foot of drywall, just because we were able to maneuver easily and cut and roll fast due to not having any furniture there. Okay, the next example is a bit bigger and better. So this happened around 12 years ago. I got a call from a GC based out of Toronto, Ontario. They had seen my ad on Yellow Pages online and they wanted, to, they wanted me to give them a quote on five 
locations they wanted to renovate in the Edmonton, Alberta area for an oil change franchise company. I faxed the GC my quote and I got to do all the five locations for one lump sum contract amount. Now I did, I did have some staffing challenges because Alberta at the time was going through an oil boom. So it was not possible for me to hire painters by the hour only for all the five locations and still keep a strict control on quality and production and, and meet the uh, completion deadline. So I hired painters for four locations and subbed out one location to another painting company so I could keep on schedule and still make some good money within the six week deadline that I had been given. But long story short, I got the work done by using this split technique of hiring several painters by the hour for 80% of the work and supervising them myself and subbing out 20% of the work to a small painting contractor. So this is a tip for you also. So after completing this $60,000 project for the five locations, I realized how profitable some commercial painting projects can be because they are not all profitable, of course. And that is when I started taking serious interest in bidding on commercial painting projects. Now the third example. So this third and final example is that of a small hospital renovation project. I bid on it and got the project. There was interior painting as well as wall vinyl covering work. So I gave a price on both and I got the whole contract as a lump sum amount of around uh, 59,000. The painting was done by my painters who I was paying by the hour. But since I did not have anyone in my crew that was qualified to do vinyl wall installation, I subbed out the installation work to a wall vinyl installer. He charged me at that time $100 per hour for a package deal. So what is this package deal? This included two experienced installers, that is himself and his uh, assistant, and included their own cutting machine, that's the vinyl cutting machine, adhesive, pickup and delivery of product to the job site, and two or three mobilizations for phase one and phase two. So phase one was mostly doing all the suites, and phase two was doing the, the hallways in the common area. So I purchased the wall vinyl through an authorized dealer and the profit for the whole project was around 25% gross. Now you may think 25% is low compared to um, residential projects, but when you have a crew producing all that work every day within the phase one and phase two, so that the job takes, let's say uh, three calendar weeks as opposed to four calendar weeks, with a smaller with smaller crews, the actual dollar amounts are big. I have also demonstrated this concept with a calculation in my previous video that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. You have to remember when the wall vinyl installers were working there, I was not supervising them because I'm not a wall vinyl technician. I was a painter and a painting contractor, technically speaking. That's where my expertise is. So I only went there in the morning to start them off and then back the next day to see how the work was going and how the various section, sections had turned out. The site supervisor was there every day, all day, supervising all the trades, including the wall vinyl installers. I did not need to babysit the wall vinyl installers or oversee their work all the time. The same thing applies to painters for that matter. I was able to make good use of time bringing materials to the job site, handling the operations and just running the business. That's what you should be doing as a painting subcontractor. So you see, uh, gradually I started to go into commercial painting because of the realization that uh, the amounts are larger and there's a lot of repeat business which you, can, which you can't get from a typical residential repaint client. 
A homeowner isn't going to ask you for a bid every month. A GC will because they are bidding on new projects all the time. This means if you get to do more commercial painting projects, the value of your business slowly begins to increase. And at the end of your painting career, the business will be worth something you can pass on to someone in your family or you can transfer it to somebody else for a certain amount based on its uh, sale value. Let me explain. I spoke with one business broker about selling my uh, painting business. And he told me that the sale value of the painting business is mainly determined by how many projects are in the pipeline. That means you need to bid what's their expected mar what the expected margins are from past experience, from past uh, projects, and how much your current sales and profitability is and how many regular clients you have. So how many regular GCs that you bid for and for whom you are doing uh, your uh, commercial painting projects. So you can see how important it is to keep on bidding on commercial painting projects and getting at least some of them. In the long run, it's very, very important. So that's the difference between commercial and residential. So in your case, since you have more access to YouTube and videos like this one, you don't have to wait for many years like I did till I realized that I should put some effort into bidding on commercial painting projects also. If you are an experienced residential painter or travel contractor, flooring contractor, whatever, who wants larger projects, you can start bidding on commercial projects now rather than waiting several more years to pick up experience. Even if you're not an expert at doing takeoffs, you could start with small commercial, commercial projects under $25,000. And later on, if you feel comfortable and are ambitious, you could bid on medium and larger, you know, drywall finishing and painting projects. If you are a painting contractor, you could also team up with a drywall finisher and take on drywall finishing and painting projects like I recently did for uh, one project. When I say recently, I mean one and a half years ago. I got a drywall finisher to do the taping and mudding and my painters did the priming and the painting. You can see some photos of this on the screen right now. So I was able to earn money on the taping and mudding part of the project and then of course the, the, the painting part. I had one of my painters assisting the taper with his work, you know, a little bit of mudding, a little bit of sanding, using a scaffolding uh, and so on. That is valuable drywall finishing experience that adds to the value of your crew. More knowledge and skills are always good for any company. So I hope you learned something and are much less hesitant now to bid on more commercial painting or drywalling or flooring projects. Even if you are not an expert at reading complicated blueprints, you can always delegate the measuring work to someone else. Now, you can't learn everything in one day, as I often say in my videos, by watching one video. So, we'll see you soon in my next video.